Hi everyone, getting right into today's video, we're gonna be doing a set of nails with some 876 products. I'm gonna be using her tips, her monomer, um, and some of the Island Vibes collection, as well as some Coverage Nude, and some Mylar Flakes from my local nail supply, and some little uh, tropical, um, these little charms here I got from Profiles Backstage, some Zoulay's Crystals, Young Nails Glue, I don't know, some other stuff, we'll get right into it. <laughs> so I hope everyone's doing well, hope you guys are all having a great day. Welcome to my channel, thanks for watching, thanks for being here, don't forget to like and subscribe everybody. So I'm just going to be putting these tips on and making sure that they fit sidewall to sidewall. I love these tips, they're the perfect shape, they're really good length, and they fit me. A lot of tips I have to uh, manipulate quite a bit to get them to fit me. Um, so I made sure they fit sidewall to sidewall when I sized them, and then I filed off that little nub that's always on the end and now I'm going to glue them on. I do have on a pop-off base coat, sorry, peel-off base coat so I can pop these off. Um, I don't know if you guys experience this, but whenever I get ready to do a set of nails, of course I go wash my hands and then I'm using swipe and other stuff so my other hands just get so dry and from working at Target, my nails, my hands are so dry from handling so many products and swiping things across the thing my thumb was cut so please just excuse the condition of my right hand and how crusty dusty it looks if i had put lotion on after i washed my hands then it would have got all over my set and everything else so this is a brush that i got about three years ago at my nail supply i forgot about it it's literally what i taught myself on for a while and i love it um so let's take a look at this product here i don't know if i missed anything while i was talking there but um if you notice the next few beads, I am keeping this application in real time so you guys can see the performance of the product and how I lay acrylic. So these beads polymerize just instantly. And I love this color, Morphia is a great name for it because it's like a reddish orange. It's not just a true red, there's a lot of orange in it. So it did make me kind of think of fire. And you know, so I wanted to do kind of an island set, like maybe like sunset colors. So that's why I chose these colors. I'm gonna do some marbling and ombre, which is my go-to. And I got those little, thought those little charms would be cute to put in. And I'm using the nude, um, like, maybe as a, as like beach or sand. I mean, these are ideas we have in our head. I can't usually make them come to fruition on the nail, but it's just a nail design, you know? So uh, whenever I put on or start my application, it depends on how long the tip is that I'm working. I don't, if it's a long nail like this, I don't start my bead where the tip meets the nail because I just like to work in smaller sections. That's just me. I don't know, sometimes I get in the mood and put in a big fat bead, but I did show this right here because I want you guys to see the pickup and how fast it polymerizes. And also, you can see how well it, just, you can just tell, if you know acrylic and you work with acrylic, you can tell by the resistance this bead is giving me that it is just a nice buttery texture. So I did um, use the monomer in the beginning and I did mention when I was first swatching the cover colors that I wasn't sure if it was the monomer making the product stick to my brush or if it was the other products I was using etc so at some point in this video I couldn't mark where when I was doing this voiceover I do switch to by Kiara Sky monomer because the monomer was making the product stick to my brush I like the monomer it has a good smell it works great it's medium setting but it was making the product stick to my brush as you can see here and then uh, this was supposed to be uh, this one or the next one was supposed to be a cuticle bead and it literally stuck to the acrylic underneath it and I thought it was going to give me trouble. But one good thing about this is, as you can see here, it just lets you work with it. As soon as you put it down, it stays where you put it. I think it's the next bead actually. But um, when I'm laying this bead, this was for my apex, so I wanted half of it to stay there and half of it to come down and it let me do that. So yeah, this is the bead I was talking about. I, I tried to put it up there to my cuticle, but it grabbed onto that product and stuck there. So luckily it let me push it up there. It's really malleable and nice. So I, I was just super impressed with this. I've said it a few times. Um, I want to get the rest of the colors. I think there was like a purple and a black. I can't remember off the top of my head, but other colors, I think a pink or did I get a pink? <laughs> I don't know. They're not in front of me uh, right now. You guys, I'm sorry. I can't remember the rest of them, but yeah, um, I, definitely wholeheartedly recommend these products and really 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 like them and the colors are unique 
And yeah, go get you some. Use my code Jen. It's just Jen, J E N, um, at checkout uh, for money off on your order. I'm definitely going to be leaving the link and my code in the description box and the codes to my other stuff. I also have a video coming up, um, for some other, more colors from Born Pretty and Rosalind. But I have other sets going on in my mind that I want to get out. Like, I don't know, tell me in the comments if you guys experience this. Like, you might see something on Instagram or notice something in your products where it just burns up your mind until you can get that set done. I have like three or four sets just burning up my mind right now. And then I'll go through periods, and I mean like months, okay, where I can't think of one design. I go on, I, I get tons of inspo, look at pictures, do all that, look at my products, but I literally can't make anything. Like I have to make myself do nails. I love doing the nails, that isn't it. Um, but I can't think of a design. So right here, I'm, while the while the acrylic is still a little bit damp, I guess you could say, I'm going to put these little charms on, and then I'm going to use Mia Secret Clear to encapsulate them. And I don't want my nail thick, so I'm just going to put enough on to give my nail a little bit more shape in that area and to get the Mylar flakes on as well. So... Um, this Mia Secret dries really fast, so I use small wet beads instead of dragging down one big one because um, it just dries too quick, which I, I love it drying fast, believe me. And then also I do have to end up changing my brush, so I'll show you how I soak it and clean it because I don't know if this happens to you guys, but clear, whenever I start working with clear, it gets stuck in my brush. It just does, um, maybe because it's... I heard Paige or someone describe why that happens, and it was a good answer. I was like, oh, that's why. It's not just me. But yeah, it always sticks in my brush, and I forget while I'm working with it, oh, I've got to really, really clean my brush between each bead or whatever. So I just swap brushes. But um, yeah, so I added the Mylar Flakes, and they pretty much stay in place if you have anything sticky. And there is a lump there that I'll file off. So as for filing, you guys, um, these popped off immediately. The only finger that stayed on while I was filing was the thumb, so I show you that. So here's another way you can tell you've got a good product. That bead was way too dry. I put it down way too dry. But I just wet my brush and started putting some more monomer into that bead, and it stayed right there, and it let me put monomer into it and keep working. Um, this color and this is literally the the red and this color it's coverage nude are my favorite colors by her this reminds me of nude panther or wifey material from not polished the color how it kind of has a grayish purple pinkish tint to it but it's still nude oh it's just one of my favorite color nudes i love this um i don't know i just can't stop looking at this color i just want to do a whole set that's just this color and nothing else really really pretty and it works amazing um, so, yeah, the um, I understand that I say um too much. I will work on that. I got away from doing it, and now I'm back to it. <laughs> I don't know why. So, anyway, this was supposed to be my sand, okay? My little beach scene. So, I'm going to put some palm trees, and I think a little starfish or something right here while it's still wet. And, yeah, again, I love this color. I was going to say something else about it. Well, anyway, so I'm going to press these into the acrylic while it's still wet. You want to make sure that it's the same texture that you would when you're doing, when you're adding these on, you want to make sure your acrylic is the same texture as if you were going to do a color block, as if you were going to go get a blade and cut it. So mattified, but not dry. If you put it in too wet, those charms will sink into the acrylic and you won't be able to see them. I've made that mistake before. So when I do this yellow, I can't really ombre it. I want an ombre, but I can't really pull it down because it's going to cover my charms. So a good way to do that is to work with a really wet bead. So if this looks strange, like what I'm doing, like what is she doing? Is she going to leave it looking like this? And why is it so wet? And, you know, all that. You can do an ombre without pulling product down. Just by laying a really wet bead and kind of um, blending it at, at the ombre area, and if it doesn't blend all the way how you want it to look, like you see some of those little parts are kind of stuck there, you just add add a little bit more and that pigment will bleed out where you want it to. See how that's happening? So if you just use your acrylic really wet and really small, don't pick up a really wet big bead, you're gonna have a mess. 
But if you work with it really small and wet, you can actually do a, I wouldn't actually say an ombre because you're not pulling it down, but you can like make a fade, make it look like it's faded. So throughout, you'll see me adding a little bit more. And here, my pop-off, my peel-off base coat was a little too shiny, so this didn't want to stick uh, right away. So that's why you saw it slipping just a little bit. It wasn't the product, it was my, my base. And I'm gonna kind of do the same thing here because I don't want to pull this bead down because the red will definitely cover that yellow. So I'm going to do the same type of blending. Do you see how that cuticle bead is just sitting there? It just sits there, chilling till I want to move it around. That is excellent, you guys, it's excellent. And it's not slow drying. That doesn't mean this is gonna sit there and never dry either. It literally stops letting you work with it when you're done working with it, just like I experienced with Not Polish, which this is one of the things I love about them, super beginner friendly. So it's hard to find a highly pigmented colored acrylic that is user friendly, because a lot of times you get a colored acrylic um, like if you're not ready to buy a knot polish or something, let's just say you think they're too expensive. Even though they're not, you can get them on sale. You can get them for $13 to $15 each. So don't get it in your head that knot polish is too expensive for you. Just get it if you want it, you guys, because if you want to teach yourself, you want to use a good product if you're learning. So get something like this, like 876, that actually performs well. If you get something like Kiara Sky or Glam and Glitz, it's going to be marbling on you or not drying. It's just going to make your job harder and you're going to think that you're not good at doing acrylic and it can be discouraging. It can be really, really discouraging. I speak from experience in the beginning, buying cheaper products or not name brand products and giving yourself a hard time because you're, you just think you can't do it or working in the wrong temperature. Like really take to heart a lot of the things that you hear in people's tutorials on here because that's why we're posting them because we've learned the hard way. I mean, at least for me anyway, I know that's what I do. So yeah, I would definitely recommend these if you're a beginner, extremely beginner friendly. So what I did here for my marble was I purposely laid some pretty wet beads because I just wanted them to marble on their own. So I'm there. It's not falling off the nail because it's runny or because I don't know how to pick up a bead. I was doing this on purpose. <laughs> this is how I like to marble. I think it makes the most natural, unique looking marble when you do this. I don't know. Just trial and error again. It's to me just makes the prettiest marble because there's just, you know, it runs, it runs together. And if you have a good product, you can leave it, leave it where it's at. Like I just did, I'm done playing with that. So I'm going to leave it there and it's going to dry and it's not going to take forever and it's not going to keep running. That is a good product. That marble is going to stay just where I put it. But when I'm ready to work with this other bead and just start using tapping motions, it's going to let me blend it out to my sides. And do you see how this is letting me push it up into the cuticle, but it keeps my marble? Again, good product. This is not gonna happen if you pick up some cheap product. It's just not. You're gonna, it's just gonna give you trouble. It's gonna keep running or it's gonna harden up. This is letting me work with it because I'm not done. As soon as I leave it alone though, it's gonna harden. I don't know how else to describe it than that. It's just good. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna blend this out toward my edges and I'm gonna finish uh, tucking in the sides and fix my shape. And then right here, um, I want to blend that bead, but I'm not gonna pull it down. I don't wanna ombre it or ruin the marble. So just patting is the name of the game. I say that all the time. If you can learn to not drag your product, even though that is your um, instinct to drag and pull it down if you can learn to do more padding motions when you're applying acrylic i remember one time i was watching game. v from v nailed it and she had said that you know to just tap 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 lightly tap and then i started watching what she was actually doing with her brush instead of like how the acrylic was performing and i just realized how much she was tapping more than dragging and i started trying it and it was literally like a light bulb went off i still remember that happening and it really changing things for me. So you guys try that, just try it out. So right here, I also wanted you, to, you guys to notice, even if you need to go back a second or not, when I laid this yellow bead, I showed it in the video where I swatched these, really highly pigmented, um, here's the, my um again, <laughs> acrylics. I wasn't going to say the word acrylic. I was gonna say like, uh, neons or glow colors, they're always going to have that separation from the pigment and the clear when you lay it down. So it's going to look like it's a marbling 
acrylic. Don't discount it when that happens. Add more monomer, start blending the bead, and if it blends out like this one did, you can see clearly that it's a beautiful creamy yellow color because I added monomer and I started working with and blending that bead, you're fine. Um, the highest quality acrylics do that. It's just the, the nature of highly pigmented colors. And when, I think probably all highly pigmented colors do it, you just don't see it as much with a darker color than you would with like a lime green or a yellow like this. So don't discount it when you see that. I wouldn't necessarily call it marbling. Yes, it, it the product is separating from each other, but if it blends out, you're good. So, uh, so right here, I'm just going to marble the red down into the yellow, and where I missed a little bit, I'm just gonna add a small wet bead and drag that down. And I want you guys to know that when you're doing a marble like this, it's normal that your, even if you stop your marbling there, as your brush drags down, you're gonna drag down a little bit of that darker color. So just take a little bit more like I just did here of the lighter color and blend it up. It's perfectly fine to kind of do your ombre in an upward motion. Just as long as you have the blend that you like, you're good. So I added some Mylar flakes to the top of this nail and I couldn't really see them and I didn't really know how it was gonna look or if they were gonna show up at all, but I just kind of wanted a subtle reflection in them I wasn't really thinking of fire, I was more thinking of like sunset and just like the sparkly nature of the sky and the way, um, there's an um, sorry, <laughs> the way that water reflects into a sunset, I don't know you guys, it's corny, but you think of things when you're doing a nail design and none of this looks like water or beach or any of that, but I don't know, it's just what I was thinking. So I did wait for this nail to dry to see if I was going to need to or want to add any more yellow and so I, I did looking at it want to add a little bit more so that's what I'm doing here I'm just going in with a small wet bead and fixing that fade I wouldn't really call it an ombre I'm fixing the top and bottom of that fade and so that's just what I'm doing here this nail is totally dry and I tried to lay my acrylic really really neat I don't know if you can tell but most of my application is as tight to the nail tip as I can keep it which really helps keep your shape and really helps you on the filing end. When you go to file, all you really have to do is fine tune. You're gonna seal your cuticle and that's about it. Of course, dust up your, your edges. And again, I'm gonna be doing some wet beads here because I'm gonna be doing a marble. This marble, I wanted some more white. So I added a bigger bead of white and I thought this was, besides the green, some pretty cool like Jamaican colors until here. <laughs> Literally, as soon as I turned my hand over, my mind was like McDonald's. It was like McDonald's colors. And I was like, oh no, it's like ketchup and mustard. I put too much white. But no, it ends up uh, matching the other nails and, and looking fine. But I thought that was funny. I don't know. You guys can let me know. I hope it doesn't keep McDonald's like in your mind now. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I think the marble came out really, really cool, actually. And again, when you have it, uh, a design come out like that, just leave it alone. The less you work with a marble, the better. If you get a look you want, just leave it alone. Just let it dry and you'll be good. <clears throat> Pardon me. And this one is going to let me work the bead from here all the way up into my cuticle. Watch this. But as you see, it's not running everywhere. Normally, if I have a bead that's wet enough to let me pull it all the way up into the cuticle, and still, and still, you see it's still, 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 still letting me work with it. Do you see this? But it's not running. It, any other acrylic, I'm sorry, would have run off the nail. My marble wouldn't have stayed there. It would have, this is just really, really good product. I want more colors. Chelsea, if you're listening or watching, your island collection was fabulous, but I want more colors now, more. I, I want just every color. So get busy. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really, really like these. So now I'm going to be into encapsulating. And I did speed this up uh, to get through this because it's just encapsulating. But my application was in uh, real time, you guys, just FYI. I think I said that already. Yeah. So right here, I'm going to start soaking this brush because it had too much clear in it. So I'm going to my other little favorite handy dandy brush. I am getting better uh, working with larger brushes. 
Again, I don't see why they have to be small or big. Who cares what size they are? As long as you're comfortable with your application and you get the job done and um, there's an um. See, I really am trying to catch them. I'm sorry. As long as you get the job done and your application is on point, who cares what brush size or brand you are using? That's what I think. I'm sticking to it. Um, this was starting to another, um, wow. This was starting to stick to this brush too. So I think I swapped this one out uh, as well, even though I used another not polished brush, which I did. I'm going to, at the end of this video, I'm adding a little clip. Stephanie um, sent me, we swapped brushes. Okay. Uh, she let me know that she did have, when I was on the search for another one of these young nails brush, she was kind enough to reach out to me and tell me that she had one and how amazing is that? Just amazing. And so we sent each other a brush. We swapped a brush and I just sent her the brush. But when I got her package, she sent me all kinds of cute stuff. She's so sweet. So shout out to you, Stephanie. At the end of this video, I'm adding a little clip of all the things that she sent me because that was just adorable and so just so sweet. So here's the finished look, you guys, with uh, application anyways, application only. And I am keeping the filing in of the thumb only. So I'm going in with an 876 file. And the reason I'm only showing the thumb is because this is the only one that didn't pop off during filing. So after this, I'm going to clean the nail with swipe and show it to you. And then it's going to cut straight to the finished product because I didn't get any of that on camera. I show you guys bling placement and top coat, usually when I'm doing clients and my filing method and stuff. So you'll get a little bit of it here. Now, I'm not a pro on files. I don't order them from vendors. I don't know how to get them or test them or what things about files mean. But this file seemed like it was one of those files that might have like a protective coating on it. You know how when you get a new file, you're supposed to season it so you don't cut your client? It seemed like this was one of those files that might have that coating on it because it took me a minute to like get it going. But once I got like the coating off, I think that's what it is. Don't like quote me on that. I'm not sure. It started working like a champ. Really, really good file. Nice and sturdy. So I like these files. Um, I had some files before that did this and I just didn't know better. I thought they weren't good files because they were not filing immediately. But don't discount it if you have a file like that. I believe they're just pre-seasoned or have a protective layer. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not a pro at, at that on files <laughs> but it worked great so after this this is going to I'm going to clean the nail show it to you and we're going to go straight into the finished product as well as the little clip I add to the end to thank Stephanie from Nail Love so I'm gonna let you guys go because this is about to end thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here and you guys don't forget to subscribe we're about a hundred away from a really big giveaway so please consider subscribing like this video and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.
Okay, I'm back, you guys. This is all of the things that Stephanie from Nail Love. She has a channel here, and I do tag her if you want to look at my description box. So that's Stephanie from Nail Love. You guys should go watch her if you aren't. Um, she sent me the Young Nails brush that I've been coveting and wanting that was actually usable, and I used it in this video, actually. But she also sent me these little treasures along with it, and I, it was just so sweet of her. She didn't have to do that, and I just want to shout her out here and thank her. So thank you, Stephanie. Look at these butterflies. Are you kidding me? They're hollow, but silver and gold. They're, these are really unique, really beautiful. I can't wait to use them. I have a client who's obsessed with hollow, and she's going to love these. She likes things on her nails, but she doesn't like any bling or anything sticking up, so she's going to love these. Just wow. So I'll actually be able to use this stuff. So I really appreciate it. So I got that little, I'm never going to be able to think of the name of it, but that little rubber tool there. And then I should have used one of these flowers on the thumbnail. How cute would this have been? Charlie, now my dog's going to bark. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do this voice over over again. I just want to get this posted. I should have used that sticker that I was posting to on this set. But you guys, look at everything she sent me just for trading brushes. So again, shout out to you, Stephanie. Thank you so much. That was so sweet of you. Bye, you guys.